In this section, we're going to take a look at some more advanced dimensioning tools. Now, let's open up a dimension example file. Browse to this chapters folder and look for the dimension example.dwg file and open it up. Go to the dimension tab. Now, here we have several different dimensions already put in here. Now, you can make changes to dimensions through the properties panel. You can open that up by pressing the control key and the number one key at the same time. Now, if you want to change the text value, double click the text and that will open it up in a text editor. You'll have what looks like your multi line text editor contextual ribbon right up here. So you can get access to your justification, your fonts, your colors, bold, italicized, etc. You can even match properties inside the text editor. You can change your text style or you can type things in. So let's say that we need to represent this not with the measurement, but with some actual words. So you just select that text object there and press the delete key or backspace that will erase that. And then you can type in anything else. I'm just going to type in something simple. Side view. If you press enter, it carriages down to another line. So what you want to do is just click somewhere outside with your mouse, just click somewhere outside of that text. And there is your text. You can override that quite easily. So double click the text. And this works just like a regular text editor. You can move with your arrows. You can delete. And if you want your measurement value back, you type in less than and then greater than. And it puts in the actual measurement for you. But you can do all sorts of things. You can type in text just like that. Now, if you select your text object and you can come to the properties palette, can change the color here, but remember, please don't ever change it to anything else but by layer. You can change the, what layer it's on if you need to. You can change the line type, all of your regular object selection type styles. Here you can change the different type of style. If we scroll down, we can override some of the other features here. Now, typically, you're not going to want to override any arrows or anything like that, except for very special cases. If you need certain or specific arrowheads, you can. You can do that, though, I'd suggest by creating a style specifically for that purpose. But you can change some of these objects here. Just click on them, find the one you want, and it will make it into you know, a dot or an arrow. Now you have an arrow one and an arrow two, just like you'll have a dimension line one and a dimension line two, and so on and so forth. All the items that refer to number one are the very first one that you click. So when you create your dimension, Wherever I click first will be you know, arrowhead one, extension line number one, and my second selection will be number two. I'm going to delete this. So if I select my dimension again, and I want to turn off some of my dimension lines, like right here, select it and turn it off. That'll be this left side. Now your dimension line is the line, it's sort of horizontal. It goes from extension line to extension line, it's where the arrowheads go. I can turn them both off if I'd like. That way I have just the text and just the extension lines. It's a rare case that you would want something like that, but you can do it. Now your extension lines, you can turn off and on as well. Just select it and turn off and turn off. And I'm gonna turn my dimension lines back on. Sometimes this is something you might want to do. Leave your dimension lines on but turn off your extension lines. So you can see here, there are a lot of different things you can change. You can also grip edit a dimension. So if I select a dimension, you can see I have a couple of different grips here and each one of them have different things about them, different traits. So if I select this point, this changes where the dimension is. So it's dimensioning to a different spot. So once you move it, then your value will change. So you can change that at any time. These grips here at the arrowheads will reposition it you know, up or down like that. And the grip on the text allows you to move it and put it in different locations. Now if you raise it up or raise it down, of course your extension lines and your dimension lines, they're gonna follow it with you. So that's a great way to align these and use them uh, the way you want to. There are a lot of other dimension tools on your ribbon. So go to the annotate tab and you can have a lot of different items right here. And there are even some more at the bottom here. Let's go over some of them. 
this puts a break in your dimension. You select the tool here, and then you follow the on-screen instructions. Select the dimension you want to add a break to, and then you select the dimension that goes through it, and it will automatically size that for you. So that's a nice little feature there. Another one you might want to use is the adjust space. This adjusts the space between your linear dimensions. So if I select the baseline and then select the one to change, right click, I can just auto and it will automatically adjust it to a certain size. Now this is good if you want to have a lot of stack dimensions that need to have the exact same spacing throughout the view. That'll keep your drawing looking real nice. Now this quick tool will draw dimensions very quickly, but you have to be in model space and you have to be able to select, I'm going to select several different items here and then it does this. Of course, it's not to the proper scale. I don't have this set up correctly, but you can see it puts all of the dimensions relative to that view in there right away, real quickly. You don't have a lot of control over it, so it's not something that I use a lot, but in some mechanical drawings, it might help you to get a string of dimensions in there very quickly. This will add inspection symbols to your dimension. This will update your dimensions to a current style. Sometimes the dimensions don't update right away if you've changed the style. If you click this tool, then select the dimension object that you want to update, then press enter, it will sort of recalibrate that dimension to look like the style that it's assigned to. So that's a quick way to fix your dimensions if they get messed up. This will reassociate dimensions that come off of the wrong points. This is the continue option. I use it often. You have two different types of continues. So if I go to this dimension style here, I'm going to erase these so they're out of our way. But if I start a dimension here and I click on the continue, it's going to pick up right where I left off. So I can continue dimensioning. As you see here, it goes on and on. Now you can do the linear or you can do stack and baseline. And it remembers the last one you used. However, if you don't want to use that one, once you start the command, type in the letter S, press enter, and then select the baseline you want to start with. And there you go. And they both work the same way. Now there are a few other things in here I really want to show you. I want to show you the jog line. So let's say you want to create a dimension and you want to show a jog in it. Maybe it's an estimated dimension that you're showing off like an extension. Sometimes we need to put a little jog in our dimension line. It's okay, so you take your dimension, you start the dimension jog button, just click on it, select your dimension, and then press return. And that will put your jog right in here, and then you can just click on it and you can drag it left or right, wherever you want to go to. Now if you want to remove a jog, start the command again, type in R for remove, press return, select the dimension and it goes away. So that's a nice little thing that you can do. Also, if you select a dimension and you have your right click shortcut menus on, you can get to some different things here like dimension style. You can change the dimension style or if you have changed the dimension settings some way and you want that to be a brand new style, you can click here to save as a new style. You can remove style overrides. You can change the precision of your dimension so that it can go to more or less decimal places. So there are a few things that you can get to with a select and right click.